<laughs> All right. Today we're gonna do a tour of the electronics in our pilot. Ho uh, today we're gonna do an electronics tour. Uh, it happy Saturday today it is once again not that great outside a little bit on the chilly side so it was a great time to come at you with a full extended tour of all of our electronics in the pilot house we've done an abridged version before in a previous boat tour video where Sean kind of glossed over everything but we get a ton of questions from a lot of you guys about um, wanting to go a little more in depth onto exactly what we have how it's used um, for chart plotting autopilot all that fun stuff so today Sean's gonna give you the full tour of our electronics. And because it's a little lengthy and it might be a little boring or a lot boring for some of you, I'm gonna put in the video description um, timestamps for everything he talks about. So if it's autopilot that you're most interested in learning about or our AIS or stabilization, you'll know exactly where in the video we talk about it. So you can just fast forward. If you do wanna to listen to all of it, all the power to you, listen away, um, but just grab a beverage, maybe some snacks, because it's a long one. Today we're up in the pilot house of our Nordhaven 43, and we're gonna give you an overview of the electronics that we use to operate and navigate our boat. There's two uh, panels within the helm at our pilot house. So there's an upper panel and there's a lower panel. The things that are mounted on the upper panel are things that you maybe look at less frequently and the items that are mounted on the lower panel are meant to be sort of more in your face or the things that you're interfacing with the most frequently when you're on passage. So we'll start in the upper right hand corner of the upper panel and we'll kind of work our way around counterclockwise. So in the very upper right, this first instrument is a battery monitor. Uh, what it does is it's effectively like a fuel gauge but for a battery. So it lets you know how much current you've uh, pulled out of your battery bank and then when you're recharging your battery bank when you're plugged in or when you're running the generator or when the engine is running and the alternator is charging your battery it will let you know how much the amperage has been put back into the battery so you always know your state of charge and it's not a guess or assumption based on looking at the voltage of, of your battery bank. Voltage is an indicator of state of charge but if there's a load on the battery banks that can pull down the volt and it makes it difficult to understand exactly um, how much of your batteries you've consumed or how much you've recharged. So a very helpful instrument in managing our, our battery usage and knowing exactly when to recharge them without uh, you know overly discharging them and doing da permanent damage to the batteries. The next thing that we'll talk about is there's three clusters of engine instruments. So we have three diesel engines aboard Freedom. The first one that's all the way over to the right is our Northern Lights engine instrumentation. So the Northern Lights is our generator. The generator is used for making 120 volt alternating current power on our boat. Basically anytime we're away from a dock and we're not able to be plugged into shore power and we need 120 volts, we can start up the generator and the generator produces that voltage and then in turn that voltage can be used for running various devices within our boat. So air conditioning systems, hot water heaters, microwaves, things like that. We also have an inverter where we can power up some of those devices off of our battery bank. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The next panel of engine instrumentation is our lugger panel. The lugger is the main engine in our boat. So this is the main propulsion engine in our boat that makes our boat move when we're under passage. So this is all the manual instrumentation that goes with the motor. So a key and stop switch for starting and stopping the engine, a tachometer to know the speed of the engine, oil pressure, engine temperature, the uh, voltage coming off of the alternator, and engine hours. To the left of that is our Yanmar engine instrumentation. So the Yanmar aboard our boat is our secondary propulsion engine. It's called our get home motor or our wing engine. If for some reason we ever lost power on the main engine of our boat, 
we have a complete redundant engine, shaft, and folding propeller that we can deploy to get the boat you know, safely to shore where we can get uh, maintenance done on, on the main engine. So this is the control panel for the Anmar motor. To the left of that is an anemometer. This is an instrument that's used for understanding what the direction and speed of the wind is. So there is a sending unit up on the top of our mast. Uh, it's basically a fan that's propelled by the wind and that's how the wind speed is calculated. And then that fan vertical elevator on it that can allow the entire fan to rotate based on the direction of the wind. And that's what ends up rotating this needle. So we know which way the wind is coming from and how hard the wind is blowing. You can change this to be scaled in miles per hour or knots. Our system is in knots and you can also set it up to read true wind speed and direction or relative or apparent wind speed and direction. The difference is, is apparent or relative is the wind speed in relationship to your boat. True takes your boat out of the equation. So in other words, if the wind is coming from the bow of our boat, and let's say it's blowing 10 knots, and let's say we were driving directly into the wind, and say our boat was traveling at 10 knots, which it doesn't, it doesn't do 10 knots, but apparent wind would be 20 knots. So the 10 knots of our boat against a 10 knot headwind feels like 20 knots worth of breeze, but the actual breeze, if you were to take the boat out of the equation, is just 10 knots from ahead. So true is, uh, you know, without the boat, apparent is, is taking the boat into the equation as well. To the left of that is our VHF radio. So the VHF radio is used for communicating with other boats that are nearby. This uses a, a radio signal that's broadcasted through an antenna. The typical range of a VHF radio is somewhere maybe between 15 and 30 miles. And this all depends on the equipment that you have installed on your boat, how long your antennas are, how high they're mounted on the boat. It's really a line of sight communications and typically limited to about 30 miles. Sometimes you can get a little bit more or less out of them, but just a boat to boat broadcast or boat to shore broadcast if you're trying to get a hold of a marina as you're coming in and looking for a slip assignment, for example. So that handles everything that's on the upper panel. Shifting down, if we go all the way to the left of the lower panel, this device here is a satellite telephone. So it's a KVH fleet band satellite broadcasting phone. This allows you to do is make a telephone call really anywhere you are in the world absent of having a cell phone signal. So this is uh, communicating to the satellites and then the satellites communicating back down to the person that you're trying to call. Next, we have a computer. So this is a Dell tablet PC. It's all fully touchscreen, has an integrated battery in it as well. If we were to lose power for some reason in the boat, the computer would be able to stay powered on until its battery is depleted. But what we run on this computer is a charting software. So we run Coastal Explorer, made by a company locally called Rosepoint. And uh, what you can do is you can load charts onto the computer and then you can use those charts for doing route planning. You can overlay integrated instrument data. So all of the instruments that are on our boat are on a network and that network of instrument data comes into this USB port on the computer. So here we can see charts of the water that we're boating in, the depths of the water that are around us, and we can plot courses and do course planning on the computer. It's kind of fully configurable. You can you know, split the screen. So we have one screen where the chart is zoomed out and we can see a large area around us and another chart where we're zoomed much further in. But you can split this up. You could have it all on one screen or have you know, sort of four panels within the screen. And then we also have some instrumentation off to the right hand side. And there's different tabs here where you can pre-configure what instruments are important to you and what data that it is that you want to see. But all of the routes that we plan on our screen, that data when we're executing a route or when we're on voyage, that data is shared through the network and the autopilot's able to receive it and use that data to keep the boat on course. All of our route planning is done on the PC. The other nice thing about having a, a PC on the boat is being an open computer, we can connect this to Wi-Fi or we can connect this to a tethered cellular account and we're able to get on the internet. And, and that's helpful for checking weather or just you know reviewing different applications that can be nice when you're underway boating. On the center of our dash, we have a compass up at the top. So a manual compass 
we have two 12 inch multi-function displays. So this boat is equipped with Simrad, had Raymarine and other boats. Basically Simrad, Garmin, Raymarine, Furuno, all manufacturers that make marine instrumentation, all those manufacturers make multi-function displays. The multi-function display allows you to sort of customize the data that you're seeing, but you can see your charts, you can see radar. Radar is the spinning wand that's up on the top of our boat. Radar is used for seeing things that are above the waterline. So other boats and other objects on shore show up as a mass on the radar screen. We can see our sonar. Our sonar is a transducer that's mounted to the bottom of the boat and allows us to see water depth. Also, if you're into angling and fishing, you can see different marine life that might be in the area if that's your thing. And then you can also display things like cameras and any of the connected instrumentation that's on the network all on the multi-function display. So the multi-function display is sort of similar to a computer, but it's a closed architecture where you can't get on the internet, you can't load your own apps. It's proprietary to the manufacturer that makes it and devices that are connected to it. These aren't the newest vintage. These are 2014 Simrad screens. They've had a few generations since then, but I would say very similar to you know, the experience that I have with Raymarine or, or some of the other electronics. We primarily use the left one to display radar on full screen. And then the right one we use as a redundant chart. So if something froze up on our computer or our computer stopped working, we also have charts available on our multifunction display. The other nice thing is the chart software that we use, the card where the chart data is coming from, is different. We do that by design or on purpose. A lot of times different chartography softwares will show different objects on the chart. So it's nice to be able to do a comparison when you're getting into shallow areas or you know just kind of uncharted areas. Some chart manufacturers have more detail than others. So it's nice to have some redundancy there. We run Navionics in the Simrad displays and we run NOAA charts as well as Rose Point charts and CMAP on the PC. So we have a lot of selection for which uh, chart manufacturer we're referencing. And it's nice to do a comparison between the two. On the right of this right multifunction display, we have some instrumentation that we have set up that's important to us. We have wind direction, speed, we have uh, how quickly the boat's turning, rudder angle, odometer. Below that we have a camera, so this particular screen supports up to two cameras. We have two installed, one is mounted to the back of the boat looking aft, and then we have another camera that's mounted in our engine room. If something was going awry down there, you might be able to spot it from the camera. The aft facing camera, a lot of people have always asked, you know, can you use that for docking if you're, you know, going astern into a slip? I would say no, I've never found the camera to be useful for docking. You don't get very good depth reception. I haven't found it to be overly helpful for docking, but what I do like the aft facing camera for is when we're doing smaller trips, when we're up in the islands and, and we may be going five or 10 miles within a day and say we have our dinghy off of the boat. One nice thing, instead of taking the dinghy and using the crane to bring it back up onto the boat deck, a lot of times we'll tow it when it's short distances. So having that aft facing camera, it's helpful to make sure that your toe is still back there and, and the line didn't come loose. So that's what we find it to be most helpful for. In between the multifunction displays, these are our autopilot controllers. There's two controllers and there's two computers and there's two pumps that are used to steer the boat automatically so we don't have to sit up here and use the wheel um, throughout the entire passage. So the autopilots can be set up to operate in a number of ways. When it's in standby mode, which is this S, when you turn the wheel, you're turning the rudder manually and you'll notice in the center this number increasing. There's a sensor on the rudder that lets us know exactly what the angle of the rudder is. So if I want to know the rudder's straight, I'll keep rotating until the bar graph comes to center and the readout reads uh, zero. So that's a rudder position indicator. Another mode that you can use within the autopilot is auto mode. So when auto is enabled, the boat will hold a constant heading. If you want to alter course from that heading, you can just use this rotary knob to dial in a new heading and then the boat will turn until that new heading is established and it'll remain on that heading until another input is given. 
Another nice feature with a slower boat, like a full displacement boat or possibly a sailboat, is this no drift mode. A slow boat can be affected by currents. All boats are affected by currents, but if you're going a few miles and it takes several hours to get there versus going that few hours and you know it maybe takes 30 minutes to get there, over the course of that couple hours, current could significantly take you off course. No drift will account for any drifting that the boat is doing and it won't just hold heading but it'll actually hold course it'll keep you on course so you're not just pointed the same way but you're and blowing off sideways but you're you're sort of pointed the same way and staying on course nav mode is when we plot a course on the chart plotter nav mode will allow the boat to follow that course so when the course takes a turn the boat will automatically turn and that's what nav mode is used for a lot of that same functionality repeated on the lower autopilot. The reason we have two is, is for redundancy. This is our primary pilot, which we typically use, but if that were to fail, we can turn on and deploy the, the secondary pilot. Get a lot of questions about what these turning levers are down here. These are called follow-up levers. So uh, what this allows you to do is steer the boat uh, similarly to manually with the wheel, but by just turning this knob, the, the rudder will turn and maintain position until you give it a new input. So for example, if I engage this lower follow-up unit, then I wanna turn the rudder to port 20 degrees. We can hear the rudder turn and we saw on the rudder position indicator that it came to 20 degrees. If I want to bring the rudder back to zero, I can just point the knob back up towards 12 o'clock and the rudder comes back to zero. So it's a way to steer the, the boat without using the steering wheel. Having them right by the wheel, we don't use them a lot, but what these are really helpful for is on larger boats, when you have separate steering stations throughout the boat, uh, wing stations out on the exterior of the boat for docking, it's nice because you're able to control the rudder without the need of having a large steering wheel at each one of those locations. So these are the follow-up levers for both of the autopilots. On either side of the steering wheel, over to the left, we have our windshield wiper controller. The windshield wiper allows the wipers to run continuously, or we can put them in intermittent mode. So there's three timed intermittent modes, and then there's a windshield washer. So if we get bow spray, or we get salt spray against the window, and it becomes difficult to look ahead, the washer will use fresh water from our fresh water tank to rinse the window and, and wipe off the salt. Below that is our bow thruster controller. So this allows the bow of the boat to move sideways. This is helpful when you're, when you're docking. The other nice feature that we have with our bow thruster is we have a wireless remote control. If we're handling lines or out on the boat and the, and the bow is starting to be affected by the wind or by the current, you don't have to run back into the pilot house to make an adjustment on the bow thruster. You can simply hit one of the buttons on the wireless controller. So this can be helpful when, when leaving or entering the slip. <laughs> This wireless controller also controls our windlass. So if we want to drop or retrieve the anchor on the front of our boat, we can do that either from the helm using this controller or anywhere on the boat using this controller. We also have foot controls up on the bow, but this allows us to operate the windlass wirelessly and with a hand control. Another item that we have wireless control for is our autopilot. We talked about when you're in auto and the boat's going a constant heading and you want to make a heading adjustment using this knob, it can also be done with this wireless controller. So this is handy if you're not seated right at the helm and within arm's reach of the autopilot controller. Let's say Elizabeth and I are back on the bench seat in the pilot house. We can remain on the seat and use this uh, autopilot controller to, to maybe divert around a, a vessel or divert around debris that might be in the water without having to come back up to the helm. To the right of the follow-up levers, this is our engine throttle and gear selector. So this will put the boat in forward or reverse, and depending on how far you move the shifter, will apply throttle to the engine to increase the speed. Over on the right of the lower helm, this is our AM FM radio. This has Bluetooth capability, so you can play media from your phone through the boat speakers. This is a fusion head unit. One nice thing is there's multiple zones on our radio, so we can control the volume level in the pilot house and the salon separately. We also have our TV tied into this radio as well, so when we're uh, watching TV or watching a movie, the sound is played throughout all the boat speakers. 
Being Bluetooth, not only can you play media from your phone through the radio, but there's also an application for the radio where you can adjust all the settings from your phone. So if you're down in the salon and the input for the television is not selected, you don't have to come up to the pilot house and change the input. You can just go into the app on your phone and change the input that way. So that's kind of helpful. Below that is our stabilizer controller. Our boat has active fin stabilizers. So there's two fins mounted beneath the boat and those fins are hydraulically controlled and they're used to counteract any roll. It doesn't really do much for the pitch of the boat, the forward and back motion, but it takes all of the, the roll motion out of the boat when you're underway. So this controller is used for activating um, those stabilizer fins and also for adjusting the, the sensitivities and gains of the fins. Upper right is our AIS controller. AIS allows us to broadcast our boat name, the size of our boat, position, how fast we're traveling and the direction that, that we're facing to other boaters that have uh, AIS equipped boats. So this signal is broadcasted through a VHF antenna, good for uh, maybe 30 miles or so. There are land-based stations that receive AIS signals from other boats that are broadcasting, and those land-based stations publish that data out on sites like marine traffic. So if you go to marine traffic, you can see all, all the boats that are moving around throughout the world. AIS is how that data, I guess, is acquired from the vessels and then brought out to the web interface where you can see that. The nice thing about AIS, not only are we broadcasting all that information to other boaters, but other boaters that have that information are broadcasting that information to us. So when you see other boats in the area that are AIS equipped, you'll know exactly how far away from you they might be. You'll know if you're on a collision course with them. You'll know what your closest point of approach is gonna be with that boat. So if you know you're gonna get within several hundred feet, you may wanna make a course correction. And you'll know exactly how long it's gonna take until you have that closest point of approach with that other vessel. AIS is a very helpful tool for collision avoidance, not just in, in situations of low visibility, but also helpful in areas of high traffic when there is good visibility. You can make decisions very early on about whether or not you need to change your course. Below the AIS controller is our inverter panel. The inverter panel allows us to take our 12 volt battery power and be able to invert or convert that to 120 volt uh, alternating current power. This allows us to have our outlets be live. So if you wanna charge a laptop or plug in a hair dryer or a toaster, all that can be done without running the generator or without being plugged into short power. So the inverter takes battery power and converts it to AC power. I think that's pretty much concludes the tour of our electronics up in the helm. Having a chart plotter connected to a GPS signal, I think is kind of number one. It allows you to know the depths of the water that you're in, uh, exactly where you're located. A chart plotter with a GPS signal for me is probably the, the one number one piece of equipment. We would be okay. Other than needing to maybe make sure we have the charts for the waters that we're gonna be entering, which is really just loading some software into the systems. Uh, other than that, the, the we have the hardware to support the trip. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So thanks for all the questions that come in. I hope I answered most all of the questions regarding the electronics on our boat. If there's not, and you want me to spend like, you know, 30 minutes to just one component, I'd be happy to do that, but I'd probably bore most. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.